Hi, I'm Jennifer Evans Cario, the president of Sugar Spend Marketing, author of Pinterest Marketing, An Hour a Day, and the social media faculty chair at Market Motive. Thanks for joining me for the wrap up in our series on Facebook ads. Today we're going to be talking about the various targeting options that Facebook gives you as you're actually going through the promoted post or Facebook advertising section. One of the things that makes Facebook advertising so popular among marketers is it's one of the few places where you really have the ability to target down on such a granular level from different demographics and interests that you can really make sure your ad is going out to the people who are the absolute most likely to engage with or interact with it. So currently, Facebook offers more than a dozen ways to target everything from age and gender to location to educational status or current employer, tons and tons of different ways to do this. Now, the nice thing about Facebook's targeting option is the targeting screen that you go through while you're building your advertising campaign does a wonderful job of walking you through each of your options and showing you what happens as you make some of those adjustments. So when we look at the left side of the screen, we see things like audience, location, age, gender, interest. We can see how we work our way through one section at a time, determining what our specific targeting is going to be to narrow our audience. When we look at the right side of the screen, this is where we see a continually updated audience definition. And what this section is going to do is every layer of targeting that you add on, it's going to put into this box to let you know exactly what set of people you're targeting. And it's going to change that potential reach number to reflect the actual amount of people that are within the Facebook user system that match the demographics you've set up. So if you're a large company and you're looking to reach millions of people based on perhaps, you know, wider geographical range or broader interest, you can do that. If you're a smaller company or you're laser targeting one of your specific campaigns and you want to take it down to something that targets, you know, 1,500 or 3,000 people, you can do that as well. And again, Facebook will give you a continual update on what those targeting numbers are looking like. Now the three biggest forms of targeting that we're going to see in Facebook are going to be things like location. So again, this might be a country based location, it might be a state based location, or if you're doing a specific campaign for a brick and mortar store, or maybe for an event that you have that's taking place in a physical location, you can go right down to the zip codes. And this is a really effective way, again, to laser target even just your messaging in onto the people that are in that specific area. There's also the option to come in and go by age. So perhaps you're a law school and you're looking for current undergrads or people coming back as a second career student, you might want to have two different sets of age targeting that are going to have different promotional text and different focus within the ad. So most companies know what their generalized demographics are in terms of who they're targeting age-wise, but again, there's different messaging and different sales points that we send to different sets of people. And this is a great way to be able to target that. And then of course, the idea of gender. If you're targeting something different to men than you are to women, you have the ability to come in and narrow the field down to one or the other. Or again, to come in and write up two different types of ads that are based to the two different genders. Now there's also the idea of interest targeting. And the interesting thing about interest targeting on Facebook is that you can start with sort of their generalized created topics. These tend to be very broad. In general, I don't recommend them for any but the largest companies trying to do the largest level of branding campaigns, but they do work really well as an idea source because you can click on some of the individual categories and expand it out to see what else is included within that area. You can also start to type in keywords or phrases and basically run searches to see what topics are going to have a match. So again, if we go with our idea of law schools and we start to type in something like law school, well, maybe we want an ad that's targeted at a law school admission test, you know, maybe at law schools in the United States or in a specific area of the United States. And we can pick up some people on that. So typing slowly, because again, once you get past a specific word or phrase, it's not going to pop up as many suggestions, but typing slowly and kind of scanning the list to see what's there can be a really good way to build out your list with some of the ideas you might not have thought of on your own. And then once you've started to put some of these in place, Facebook is also going to offer up some suggestions that are based on the selections you've made. If you're promoting a wedding site and you've started clicking things that are related to rustic weddings or barn weddings, they're going to pick up more phrases like that, you know, antique 
wedding decorations, you know, things like that, that they're going to recommend to you. So again, Facebook does a pretty good job once we start to narrow the field of helping us narrow it a little bit further. Now there's also the idea of connection targeting. So this is where you're going to start looking at, are you pushing your message out to people who are already connected with you? Are you trying to go after a new audience that hasn't connected with you yet? Or are you trying to leverage the connections you already have in order to reach sort of the friend of a friend group? So when we look at the connected options, you can narrow this down to your contacts or you can exclude that contacts, which is a very, very good idea to do if you're trying to actually build your reach, you know, or do a special promotion in an attempt to get more people in to follow you. Some of the advanced targeting that's going to allow you to market to people who may have liked specific pages that you're engaged with. Maybe they have attended or liked or RSVP'd a specific event that you have hosted. So again, if you're coming back and targeting next year's event, you may want to go after the people who connected with you on the previous year's event listing on your Facebook page. And then there's also the idea of, again, friend targeting, going after that friend of a friend, pulling off the existing credibility of saying, hey, this person that you know is connected to our brand. There's a good chance that you're going to want to be as well. Another form of targeting that Facebook offers up is relationship status. So one, you can look at it from the front of sexuality, you know, is that men interested in women, men interested in men, you know, women interested in men, vice versa, the whole combination of things. So if you want to target for, you know, say political purposes or for a cause, if you want to put up lifestyle ads that match that specific demographic, whether it's using specific imaging or specific word choices, you have the ability to do that layer of targeting. There's also the idea of going after the overall relationship status. You may want to target an engaged person in a different way that you might target a person who's married or a person who's single, because engaged people are typically at a different stage of their life and that they're looking for different products and there's different things you might want to offer out to them. So again, the creative targeting that can come into play when you look at this combination, you know, the ad that you might show to a woman who's engaged to a man for jewelry might be different than the ad that you show to a man who's engaged to a man, you know, for jewelry or for something else. So looking at how that combination can go together and how you choose to market your specific products can lend a lot of potential options here just on the relationship status alone. Now there's also the idea of education and work targeting. So let's say you're doing a campaign where you're interested in targeting grads for internships that are from a specific school that's near your physical location. You have the ability to narrow the field to people who were in college at that specific school right down to the field of study that they've actually put into place. So sometimes that's going to be targeting people for somewhere down the road because you've got someone who's in college or in high school and you're trying to pull them into a specific career path or sometimes it's shorter term prospects because maybe you're looking to hire, maybe you're looking to connect with or maybe you're offering continuous continued education credits to specific people with a specific background or educational focus. There's also the idea of targeting, again, the specific schools and majors just based on what you know you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to sell alumni gear to people from the particular colleges that might have made the national championship game in basketball or in football? Do you want to come in and do this level of targeting right down to the graduation years if you found you've got a higher conversion rate off of some of those specific years. And then again, the idea of specific workplaces, because if you are targeting, especially on the B2B side, there's a lot of potential to say, well, we know people that work at this specific company probably have this specific need and to be able to go in and laser target that way. So the great thing about Facebook is once you've gone through this whole process and you've really thought about, you know, your customer personas, who you're looking to reach out to, what your messaging is going to look like, you can start to build these ultra targeted lists. So the example we have here, we were putting something together for a specific law school that was located in the southern part of the country and they knew their target states were going to be Alabama and Florida and Georgia. We're looking for a specific age group. We're interested in postgraduate education, but we're currently in college. We could pick out the majors that we knew were most common for people who were entering law school. We could pick out the couple of years that were going to be the best fit. And because our specific ad was going to be in English, we could target people who were speaking either UK or US English. And all of a sudden we've gone from the one point you know, 5 billion people on Facebook down to 6,600 people that are laser targeted. And then we can go back and do additional targeting groups that are going to carry slightly different messaging because again, we want to match that ad that we're putting out there with the people we're trying to get it in front of. 
Now, along with targeting, one of the other really nice features that Facebook offers that used to only be part of Facebook Exchange, but has now been expanded out to all levels of Facebook users, is this idea of custom audiences. And basically what custom audiences allows you to do is take an existing list of email addresses that your business has and use it to build something even better. So when you're setting up your Facebook ad and you're in your targeting area, there's a section at the very top that says audience. That section has a link that says create new audience. And when you click on that link, what Facebook is going to allow you to do is either upload a data file that you have stored somewhere, or if you happen to use MailChimp, you're gonna have the opportunity to simply sync your MailChimp account with Facebook and to pull the data in that way. So when you choose this option and it goes out and it lets you pick which account you have set up in MailChimp or you know which account you have sitting on your hard drive that has your data fields. It'll take a little while for it to pop up and actually be ready to use, but what it will do is it will go through that list of email addresses and it will scrub that list to look for the addresses that are also associated with Facebook accounts. Now, your list is not gonna come over at 100% because a lot of people have multiple accounts, they use different accounts for different purposes. But there does usually tend to be a pretty reasonable amount of crossover between the email addresses that end up on lists and the email addresses that are used for Facebook accounts. So once you do that, then when you go back in to building your campaign, you're going to have that drop down list showing up as part of your audience where you can say, here's the specific list from MailChimp or from my hard drive that I've uploaded. And you can use that as your actual starting point. So by using that as your starting point, you have the opportunity to either start with that list and then use Facebook's targeting to add additional layers on top of it, or to use that list to exclude from any promo that you do. So let's say you're putting out a special offer for new users and you don't want it to show up for anyone that's already in your customer base. You can upload that list of email addresses and you can use that to scrub those people from Facebook and not have your ad actually show up for them. Or again, you can go in and you can, on the more positive side, you know, narrow the field a little more using all the demographic targeting that Facebook offers. Now it's important to keep in mind that there is a minimum reach to use both targeting in general on Facebook, but also to use the custom audiences. So if you're a small company and you have a very small email list, you're not really going to be able to go in and laser target your list even further, because if you have fewer than a thousand people after you're targeting, Facebook's not actually going to allow you to run the list. Now, that said, a list of any size can be used for exclusion. So it's important to remember it on that front, that even if you are a small company, you have the ability to come in and say, okay, but I want to send ads to people who aren't on my list. Now, if you're an enterprise level company and you want to come in and use your mailing list and laser target based on those demographics to fine tune the specific ads you're sending out to each group of people, custom audiences is a wonderful thing to allow you to do that. Now, just a couple you know, ideas and maybe bits of inspiration on why you would use custom audiences. Because while some people say, sure, it's great that I can upload that list and do something from it, you know, help me understand what that looks like. So if we go back to the example used earlier of a law school and we're looking to build up the followers, maybe we want to come in and we want to upload the list of email addresses we have that are associated with our students. Maybe we want to upload another list of prospective students and another list of faculty. And that's going to allow us to exclude the current fans of our Facebook page while targeting each of those three email lists in an attempt to boost our followers up. Now, there's also the idea of wanting to sell something. Maybe you have a specific event that you're trying to promote registrations for. Maybe you have a study guide that you're looking to put out. So again, excluding some of the current fans, well, using that list as a starting point to target to say, okay, we can obviously use our Facebook page to push the messages out and do promoted posts, but we have this whole other group of people that we're connected with that don't follow us on Facebook. And being able to build custom audiences out of those lists and being able to do that targeted marketing in that Facebook side of the web can be really handy for companies. And then finally, the simple idea of just increasing your exposure. You know, if you're sending out an ad using email marketing, and you want to take that same list and show that same ad to that same person when they get on Facebook as well in a form of, you know, retargeting, there's the opportunity to do that by uploading those custom audience lists. So it's a great way to reinforce those email marketing efforts by matching your Facebook ads to what you're doing elsewhere. 
Thank you so much for joining me for this series on Facebook advertising. Hey, want to become an expert in digital marketing? Then subscribe to the Simple Learn channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in digital marketing, click here.